Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India in the my previous uh, lecture uh, that is the that is in the given situation right a, f a family culture an organization culture a nation's culture that plays a very very important the way the leader uh, reacts uh, and responds and that is, has to be considered unless and until you do not con consider the culture surrounding culture uh, whether you are into a small group or into a large group, then definitely uh, there are the chances that leadership may not be effective. So, therefore, to make the, your leadership effective, you have to concern with the culture and know the culture, what type of the culture, how the and how to build the culture, right. So, therefore, in this particular session, we will talk about the organizational culture, uh, since four key organizational culture factors, leaders and culture. What can leaders do to create a more ethical culture? Uh, three types of the leadership uh, cultural development, theory of organization culture, research papers, case study and book recommendations as usual. Everyone thinks like an owner, a CEO or a managing director. It is one where everyone is entrepreneur and proactive is there and therefore, it, uh, it, it, is, the, it is the collective, it is the collective wisdom of the organization. Culture means a collective wisdom of the organization. Culture is a tested social order of an organization. It shapes the attitudes and behaviors in wide ranging and durable ways is there, right. So, uh, whenever the, uh, we, we talk about the pastel, political, economical, social, technological, environmental and legal. So, when we talk about the social dimension, then the culture is becoming the part of that social dimension. So, these attitude behaviors are, uh, in, they will be the different ways as per the society norms. So, cultural norms define what is encouraged, discouraged, accepted or rejected within a group. So, those practices some some people may admire your practices, so you are encouraged, right? And some some practices will be discouraged. So therefore, in that case, it is the essence of an organization's culture is the innovation and risk taking, attention to detail, outcome orientation, people orientation, team orientation, aggressiveness, and the stability is there. So seven primary characteristics seem to the capture of an organization's culture is there. So whenever you have to decide the organization culture. First find out these seven dimensions and then you will come to know that is wherever you are working, wh what exactly the, the orientation is working. For example, in some organization it might be innovation and risk checking. Hmm? So, that is the creative organizations, knowledge based organizations, KBOs are there and if there is a research then that will be working. Some questions that define the organizational culture is what can be talked about or not talked about, <laughs> right. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, that is the about your boss, whether you are supposed to talk or you are not supposed to talk, there is also a culture, right. So, if, if it is the culture is it not talked about the boss, please follow that culture. How do people build power, right. So, therefore, those practices, the uh, uh, secret of success, right, that is to be identified. How does a person get ahead or stay out of the trouble, right? So, therefore, by the culture, no? So, therefore, like for example, I always give the example of the uh, newly wedded daughter in law, and when, when she enters, the husband uh, informs that is what get ahead or stay out of the trouble is there, how to handle. So, what are the unwritten rules of the game? Right, and therefore every, everything is not the black and white. There are the between the lines, and those unwritten rules of the game that has to be observed. You have to be a keen observer, and not only keen observer. You should be adaptable, 
and you are adaptive in your approach and nature. If you are not adaptive in your nature and approach, believe me, that is then it will be a very tough task to be a leader. What are the organization's morality and ethics are there, the practices in the organizations? What stories are told about the organization is there, right? So, like the unsung heroes are there, the stories will be there and you are supposed to know about those particular stories. Myths and stories are the tales about the organization that are passed on over the time and communicate a story of the organization underlying values, right. So, therefore, from the mother-in-law and the um, grandmother-in-law, right. So, uh, that is the over the time what has been communicated. And, uh, so, therefore, organizations underlying values you will be understanding because when they will say, oh, this was allowed, this was not allowed, there was a fight, there was a struggle and then we got it, right. Or uh, we have not got it even after our struggle, right? So therefore, in that case, it is a story of the organization's uh, underlying values by your bosses and super bosses. Virtually any employee of the Walmart can tell you stories about uh, same Walmart in his behavior, how he rode around in the uh, in his uh, pickup truck, how he greeted people in the stores, and how he intended to just show up at different times. So, symbols and the artifacts are objects that can be seen and noticed and that describes various aspects of the culture. So, in almost any building for example, symbols and artifacts provide information about the organization's culture. So, here it, it, we, we have to see that is what are the symbols are there and what are the notices are written because they, they, that will create you an imagination that is the in this organization uh, with the help of the symbols and artifacts you will reach to the a new destination. So, since four key organizational culture factors are rituals or re recurring events or activities that reflect important aspects of the underlying culture. An organization may have spectacular sales meetings for its top performers and spouses every two years. The ritual would be an indication of the value placed on high sales and meeting high quotas. And another kind of ritual is the retirement ceremony. Right. So, therefore, in that case what type of the rituals are working and that is the uh, from the top performers and the spouses every two years is there. So, the, this is the uh, where they will understand that is the uh, whether they will be able to follow the indication and uh, adopt the signals. Language concerns the uh, jargon on idios, uh, um, idiosyncratic terms of an organization and can uh, uh, serve the several different purposes relevant to culture. So, what language uh, uh, are, are have been used and what jargons are used and then on basis of that uh, you can find out that is the first the mere fact that some know, know the language and some do not indicate who is in the culture and who is not right. So, therefore, uh, when, uh, it, it is always told if you want to be the part of any place culture you know the first language. So, therefore, it is it will be indicating that is who is a part of that culture and who is not part of that particular culture is there. So, leaders in cultures must realize that they can play an active role in changing an organization's culture not just influenced by it. This is a very very important point. So, uh, when we are talking about the job and career. So, job is that whatever is there you observe and then you follow, but the career is that that is you are not just influenced by it, but you make the correction in that also if there is required. So, you play an active role, whenever you play an active role in the leadership and the uh, culture then definitely and changing the culture. So, then definitely you are going to be the successful leader in that organization. Leaders can change culture by attending it or ignoring particular issues, problems or the projects are there. So, therefore, the task basics, how they are doing the task is there. A positive or negative consequences of certain behaviors, uh, their general personal policies uh, uh, that send messages about the value of employees to the organization such as cutting wages to avoid layoffs. They can use the role modeling and self sacrifices as a way to inspire or motivate the others to work more vigorously or uh, interact with each other differently is there. So, that is a team building culture basically. Whenever we are talking about the team building culture, so it will be way uh, the, whether they are inspired or motivates to others. Finally, leaders can also change culture by the uh, critically uh, they are analyzing the situation and working on that. 
and what can leaders do to create a more critical uh, ethical culture in the organization if they want to create be a visible role model. So, employees will look to the actions of top management right a benchmark for appropriate behavior send a positive message. A uh, simple example is about the uh, uh, employee engagement and when, when they find that their leader is fully uh, engaged and committed to the organization, the, the culture flows from top to bottom and the top management will become the benchmark for the engagement at the work right? and for the appropriate behavior. Communicate the ethical expectations, so as I mentioned that is the um, moral emotions, so that will communicate the ethical expectations. So, an organization's code of ethics that state the organization's primary values and ethical rules uh, employees must follow. So, provide the ethical training, uh, set up the seminars, workshops and training programs uh, to reinforce the organization's standard of conduct and that clarify what practices are permissible and the address potential ethical dilemmas are there. So, here it is it is the uh, ethical training is required. So, one is that is the whatever the uh, observation is there, one is the that standard of conduct, what practices are permissible. So, orientation programs basically. So, they are talking about the practices are permissible and whatever the potential uh, uh, is there to adopt a particular culture. So, how they can create a more ethical culture, visibly reward ethical acts and punish the un unethical ones, apprise the managers on how their decisions measure up against the organization's code of ethics. So, review the means as well as the ends, uh, visibly reward those who act ethically and conscientiously punish the whose do not. So, here how culture is created that is a leaders. So, actions and behavior of um, the leaders, uh, what leaders pay attention to that is much details they go what gets rewarded and what gets punished, what is that uh, uh, they appreciate and what they do not and allocation of the attention and resources and whatever the resources in, in, in are allocated and as a result of which uh, uh, the person will be able to uh, create that particular culture. Now, provide the protective mechanism is there. So, it can discuss ethical dilemmas and report unethical behavior without fear of uh, reprimand. So, therefore, in that case that is the protective mechanism is important. If somebody is saying that this is going wrong, then in that case he should be protected. This might include ethical counselors, ombudsmen or the ethical officers are there and they have to know this that is the, to create that uh, protective mechanism. So, open openness is required at the workplace that is the and uh, they have to this counselor no ethical counselors are there. So, ethical counselors will advise that is the uh, no this thing is going wrong in long term this will create a negative impact. So, we should stop that. The positive organizational culture, a positive organizational culture emphasizes building on employee strengths rewards more than its pernicious and emphasizes individual vitality and growth. So, let us consider each of these areas. So, building on employee strengths. So, although a positive organizational culture does not ignore problems, it does emphasis showing the work, workers how they can capitalize on their strengths is there. So, therefore, in that case that is the whenever we are talking about the performance of the employees. So, it, it does not uh, have the uh, ignore the problems are there, no yeah, it does emphasize workers how they can capitalize their strengths more than punishing. Now, uh, the culture is there that is a rewarding culture is there. So, because of course, there will be punishment, but uh, uh, more is towards the rewarding is there. Although most organizations are sufficiently focused on extrinsic rewards such as pay and promotions, they often forget about the power of the smaller and cheaper rewards such as praise. Part of the creating a positive organizational culture is catching the employees doing something right is there. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, they always uh, when you, you are praising your employees, those who are creating a positive organizational culture right and uh, always saying that is oh these are the employees because uh, uh, th those who are doing something right uh, and as a result of which our organization is sustainable. So, therefore, that is appraising uh, the employees that will create uh, uh, this type of this uh, appreciation of uh, the, uh, a positive culture. Emphasizing the vitality and growth, uh, so no organization will get the best uh, from the employees who see themselves as the more cogs in the machine is there, right? So therefore, it is uh, it is the always uh, have the emphasizing the uh, importance of your employees. A positive culture organizes the difference between a job and a career. 
it supports not only what the employee contributes to the organizational effectiveness, but also how the organizations can make the employee more effective personally and professionally. So, it is not like towards the one sided direction, a very good point is there. That is, it, it is the from the employee to the organizational effectiveness, no, the organizations also can make the employees more effective personally and professionally by making how? By appreciating them and giving them opportunity and uh, training and development or the counseling is there or, or, or the um, uh, praising the employees reward monetary and the non-monetary rewards also can be given. And on the basis of the monetary and non-monetary awards, um, this type of uh, uh, the culture that can be developed into the organization. So, here if, uh, if we talk about that is the how the leaders have to create the um, culture. So, three types of the leadership culture developments are there dependent, independent and interdependent. The way things are done, it is the way people interact, make decisions and influence others. Leaders own conscious and unconscious belief drive decisions and behaviors. As repeated behavior becomes leadership practices, because these practices eventually become the pattern of leadership culture and the leaders must understand their responsibility is creating or changing it is there. So, it is always the leaders uh, uh, their conscious behavior. Hmm? that is uh, how he is uh, behaving at the workplace and when he repeats his behavior and that is becoming the leadership practices. And whenever this type of the practices are there, so then this will create the pattern of the culture and uh, leaders must understand their responsibility in creating or changing it is there. So, therefore, uh, here you will find that is the it is it, it is uh, it is becoming the important that is the whenever we are talking about the leadership culture development. So, we we, uh, we can create those practices practices in the organization and when these organizations are created then it becomes a leadership uh, uh, as become the uh, the flow flow of flow as a form of a culture because as the seniors are doing the same will be followed by the followers and therefore in that case uh, these um, whatever type of the conscious or the unconscious behavior uh, the practices which the leader follows and that will that will uh, um, making the sense at the workplace sensitizing to the employees. Organizations that emphasize top down control and deference to authority in general, you can think of the dependent culture as the confirming cultures and the other characteristics often associated with the dependent cultures right. And uh, this type of they may be a command and control mindset. So, they will be a top authority at the top, they will be commanding. Seniority and position levels are important basis of respect. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, it, it is because it is a top down is there and then in here if you will find that is the uh, the seniority and position high position levels people they are making the influence. There is great emphasis on keeping things running smoothly. Hmm? So, therefore, there is nothing to worry about uh, the running the uh, things right uh, the smoothly because the uh, they already from the top to bottom they will be the directions. Most people operate with the philosophy that it is usually safest to check things out with one's boss before taking a new direction is there because this is a culture from top to bottom. So, therefore, in that case at uh, the middle level management or the junior management level of management, if somebody is working then in that case uh, definitely he is supposed to uh, take uh, the senior into the confidence. If he is taking the senior into the confidence then definitely he will be able to lead the uh, organization uh, 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 along with the culture of the organization. Independent leadership cultures are there on individual responsibility, decentralized decision making and the promotion of experts, professionals and individual contributors into the positions of authority. In general, you can think of the independent cultures as the achievement oriented culture is there and uh, other characteristics associated with the independent cultures include this. So, therefore, in whenever we are talking about the in, in independent leadership culture is there. So, then if here it, it, it is the achievement oriented culture is there because the person who wants to uh, prove himself. The leaders uh, that uh, achieve whatever it takes are an important basis of respect. Even during the times of stress, there is a great pressure not to let performance uh, numbers go down. Uh, 
bold and independent actions that gets the results is highly prized. The organization is successful because of its large number of highly competent and ambitious individuals are there and every individual is the self uh, uh, dependent and therefore, he is the unit of the organization himself is a unit and therefore, uh, the decision whatever the, um, the uh, situation will arise in a given situation he will take the decision of his own. He will not make the responsible to the top uh, top management or he will not blame to the lower management rather than he will doing, doing the everything with the confidence of himself. Third one is that is about the interdependent leadership cultures. So, there is a widespread use of dialogue, collaboration, horizontal network, uh, valuing of the differences and a focus on learning. In general, we can think of interdependent culture as the collaborative cultures and the other characteristic associated with the independent cultures include. Uh, so, therefore, interdependent culture are uh, there in this case. So, in interdependent cultures, uh, they are the, uh, they, there is a dependent culture there is an independent culture and when we talk about the interdependent culture. So, both both cultures are the employees are having the practices which is having the collaborative practices. So, many people wear several um, heads at once and roles change frequently as the organization continually adopts to changing circumstances. So, people believe it is important to let everyone learn from your experience even your mistakes. So, we have to learn from our mistakes also. So, there is a widely shared commitment to doing what it takes to make the entire organization be successful not just one's own group right rather than complete. So, not department or not section rather than the whole organization openness, candor and building trust across departments are the valued are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, whenever they are interacting from one department to another department they are having the openness right and they and they uh, a, 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 a culture of building the trust is created. So, therefore, when there is a trust among these uh, uh, the all the employees or the leaders in the organization you can imagine that is the how progressive will be the organization is there. So, leadership culture development uh, interdependent, independent and dependent is there. So, uh, how do we achieve the agreement on direction right. So, on direction is a result of shared exploration and the emergence of new perspectives in the interdependent. Agreement on direction of the result of the discussion mutual influence and compromise. Agreement on direction of the results of the willingness compliance with an authority is there. So, that is about the dependent is there. Similarly, the alignment, how do we coordinate our work so that the all fits together and the alignment results from the ongoing mutual adjustment among the system responsible people are there. And the alignment uh, in the case of the independent is results from the negotiation among the self responsible people right. And when you talk about the dependent is there from the fitting into the expectations of the larger system. So, therefore, that is from the external to internal is there whenever we are talking about the dependent is there. So, here it, it is the expectation of the larger system that will be fulfilled. As far as the commitment is concerned, maintain the commitment to the collective, commitment results from the engagement in a developing community, commitment results from the evaluation of the benefits of for self while benefiting the larger community is there. And the benefit commitment is results from the loyalty to the sources of authority or to the community um, itself is there. So, therefore, whenever we are talking about the dependent is there. So, it, it is a loyalty to the source of authority is there right. Like in the case we have seen there is direction alignment and commitment. So, in, in a developing community there, there will be the more and more interdependent. So, collaborative approach right. So, many times the collaborative approach that becomes the better approach. Now, we will take the theory of organizational culture. Uh, that is a competing values framework. It is named from the fact that the values depicted on opposite ends of each axis are inherently in tension with the each other is there. So, they represent the competing assumptions about the desired state of affairs uh, in the organization. The core values at one end of each axis or continuum are opposed to the core values at the opposite end are there. Thus, it is impossible that an organization could be both extremely flexible and extremely stable all the time. Hmm. So, at the same time that is extremely flexible also and extremely stable also. 
a culture represents a balance or the trade off between those competing values that tend to work for the organization in its particular competitive environment is there. So, always whenever there will be the challenging of any particular situation, now it will depend on that that is uh, what culture is there and how the culture respond to that particular challenge. The, uh, the competing values um, uh, 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 are assigned uh, designed to help organizations to be more deliberate in identifying a culture more likely to be successful given their respective situations and in the transitioning to it. So, therefore, whenever you are talking about the competing value, uh, values framework, right, that is the values are to be the uh, uh, towards the uh, means and the ends. So, theory of organizational culture is talk about the clan the adocracy, the hierarchy and the market is there. So, therefore, it is the control incremental is there. So, do the things right, do things fast, compete that is a focused breakthrough that is a create to do the things <coughs> first and collaborate is there, do the things together. So, that, that is about the uh, uh, interdependent is there. So, uh, here you find the collaborate do, uh, is done right in the long term development is there right and whenever we talk about the compete that is in the short term performance this will be the strategy will be there. So, it, it has to be the focused and the flexible is there and there will be the internal factors and there will be the external factors will be there. So, on the basis of this the competing values framework that can be decided and whenever we are having the flexible and internal then definitely we will have the collaborative taste there. What I feel is that that is the <clears throat> yes in a given situation definitely leadership will work uh, from the top to bottom. So, it can be the direct or it can be the indirect also, but uh, whenever we are talking about the flexible and internal is there. So, uh, organization is required to be the flexible. Sometimes organizations are focused also. Right. So, when organization is very much focused, then the internal people and the control uh, incremental control. So, th therefore, do the things right will be working. So, it is not always that is the, we are going through the breakthrough and create do the things uh, uh, first right or the, uh, uh, do the things together. So, therefore, in that case it is becoming better that is we are doing the things right. If you are doing the things right, then the competing value of the framework that will be uh, achieved. Now, here you see that is the, the in these four dimensions uh, whenever we are talking about. So, uh, it, it, it is becoming the uh, adocracy, market, hierarchy and the clan is there and whenever we are having the clan, hierarchy and adoc adocracy then definitely in that case we will be able to collaborate, to create, to compete and to control is there and this will be decided for the purpose, practice and people. So, what is our purpose is there? So, purpose is to be the flexible. What is our practice is there to collaborate, create, compete and control is there and what is our approach is there that is about the internal and the external is there. Whenever we are focused about on this particular structure, then definitely we will be able to get the long term development breakthrough and that is the if any uh, the new innovations, new interventions is to be developed by the organization, then there will be the breakthrough also in this organization. And in the case of the short term uh, performances, uh, uh, then uh, then uh, naturally we, we uh, our uh, this purpose, practice and the focus by the people that will change. And whenever we want to get the incremental, now, now I would like to mention that is the incremental is becoming the uh, like for example, the hierarchy is concerned right and that, that, that is always have been preferred by the organization. More and more you are towards the incremental in the org uh, organization, better and better you will find that is you are able to develop. However, these four uh, the uh, uh, dimensions right that is uh, about the clan adocracy and market is uh, concerned then definitely uh, for developing this comp competing value framework it is becoming uh, necessary that is uh, we, we, we uh, consider all the four parameters. And when we consider the all the four parameters uh, and, uh, and the strategies, I am sure that is the, that particular organization culture which we want to create that will be becoming the successful. So, they emphasize stability and control and also focus their attention inward right. Uh, so, have a hierarchy culture, formalize rules and procedures that tend to be highly structured places to work. 
and the always have the example of the hierarchy cultures is there. So, normally in the government agencies you will find that is the examples hierarchy cultures are government agencies, fast food change and traditional large manufacturing companies are there. So, that uh, where the organizations are emphasizing their attention inward and then have a hierarchy um, the to formalize rules and procedures are there. Whenever we are having the market culture is there, then hierarchy cultures emphasize stability and control, but focus their attention primarily on the external environment. Outside the organization itself are called the market culture is there and their interest is more on interaction with external constituencies like customers and supplies. So, that market culture are the competitive and result oriented and the result that count most are typically financial measures of the success, uh, success, uh, success such as profit. To ensure discipline in achieving these ends, there is a great emphasis on achieving the measurable goals and the targets is there. So, what characterizes market culture is a pervasive emphasis on winning often defined simply as breathing the competition is there. The clan cultures, so organizations that emphasize having a high degree of flexibility and discretion right and uh, that also focus primarily inward rather than outward are known as the clan cultures are there because in many ways they can be thought of as an extended family. A strong sense of cohesiveness characterizes clan cultures along with the shared values and the high degree of participativeness and the consensus building is there. Rooted in the teamwork, loyalty and taking care of people within the organization including their continuing development in a real sense, clan cultures can be thought of as a relationship cultures is there. Advocacy culture and finally, organization that emphasizes having a high degree of flexibility and discretion that focuses primarily on the environment outside the organization that is called the advocacy culture is there. right? So, in many ways advocacy culture represents an adop adaptation to the transitions from the individual industrial age to the information age is there. So, organizational culture is most responsive to the turbulent and rapidly changing conditions of the present age and therefore, in that case we, we are moving towards the information uh, age. To the name advocacy has roots in the uh, phrase ad hoc which means temporary as specialized. So, advocacy culture are by the nature dynamic and changing to so best foster creativity, entrepreneurship and staying on the cutting edge. This, uh, this requires a culture that emphasizes individual initiative and the freedom is there. So, in the summary what we can say, the complexities and necessities of the organizational life and survival inevitably require all cultures. So, it is not like this that is the organization will work into a, a single culture. It includes the elements from all four of the cultures, all cultures put some value on the competing values are there. So, what differentiates one culture from another is the relative predominance of one culture type over the other is, is there. So, uh, none, none, Nonetheless, it would be apparent from the quite different approaches to leadership are called for based on which uh, of these four distinctive cultures uh, dominates uh, any organization. But please keep in mind that is the, the leadership in hierarchy culture for example, emphasizes careful management of information, monitoring detail aspects of operations and assuring operational dependability and reliability is there. While in the case of when we are talking about the combination of all the four cultures, then definitely in that case that will be the collective wisdom as I have mentioned. In contrast, leadership in market cultures places a premium on aggressiveness, decisiveness, productivity which is not the same thing as stability or continuity and the outperforming external competitors. So, leadership in a clan culture focuses on process more than output especially as it pertains to minimizing conflict and maximizing the consensus are there. A premium is placed on leadership that is empathetic and caring and the builds trust and leadership is adocracy cultures requires vision, creativity and the future oriented thinking is there. So, as usual this is the research paper which is suggested and found to be relevant. Leadership vision, organizational culture and support for the innovation in not for profit and the for profit organizations is there. So, Cooper and this Santora. So, this particular paper which is uh, for the path analytic modeling provides partial support for the hypothesis right and the finding of the study suggests that helping leaders better articulate their organizational visions is a worthwhile endeavor because these leaders engage their workers in the strategic orientation of their organization and build innovative and creative enterprise as a result which is the uh, build innovative organization.
this is the case study of the Toyota. Did Toyota's culture cause its uh, problem? That is the if this is a culture, how they, they have taken care of and they, there you will find that is the uh, if you were the leader uh, CEO of the Toyota when the story was first publicized, how would you have reacted? If is it possible to have a strong even arrogant culture and still produce safe and high quality vehicles? So, does, does it work and does it require? So, you can answer these questions, right? Now, as usual, this is the book, Organizational Culture and the Leadership and that is by the Josie Bass Business and Management Series. Author is the Edgar H. Sheen is there. Please read this book and therefore, you will get the role of the culture is there. These are the references uh, which have been suggested and taken uh, this material from these books and uh, issues. I am sure that is uh, creating a vision and developing a culture in the organization, first the identifying the culture and then building the culture um, that you will be uh, enough capable as a leader. Thank you. Mm -hmm.